Okay, Paul here, and today on the bench we have this cool Westinghouse um, bullet fan. It's a catalog number 12 LA3, looks like LA3, and nice looking fan, oscillating fan. And you see it's got the bullet shaped case on it. And the fan runs, but I'm not exactly sure what's going on with it. Let's get the voltage up to, say, about 110. Right there, we got about 110 volts, 110.4. If I turn it on, you see it's slow starting, definitely needs to be cleaned. Okay, that was one click of the switch. And you'll notice it's drawing 39 milliamps, uh, 390 milliamps, so 0.39 amps. If I click the switch one more time, it's drawing nothing. So that takes it to zero, which means off, which is probably supposed to be medium. I click it one more time, it's still off. So there's some issues with the speed or the switch. So that's on. So the way the switch is working is click it once, on. I don't know what speed that is because some of the speeds are not working. So we got on, off, off, and then back on. So it should probably be on, lower high, and then off. So one of the speeds is not working, or the, the wrong switch is in the fan, in which case it's a three-position switch, and it's only supposed to be a two-position switch. But we're going to figure that out right now. I'm going to take the bottom off and take a look at the speed switch in here. And uh, and I need to contact the uh, owner and see what, what we're going to do to it. Um, pretty sure they're going to want a new cord grounded and, uh, of course, the motor cleaned out and everything. So, got a felt cardboard on the bottom that's glued on and that's holding the controls. So, I imagine the screws for the um, fan base are underneath. So, I'm going to have to take this off to get to the fan base. So I'll remove that and then we'll look at the switches and see what we got going on in the base and then we'll continue from there. Yeah, because I don't see any other screws. There's holes here, but there's no screws in them. So it's got to be screwed from the bottom. Okay, let me get that off and we'll check it out. Okay, yeah, I found the screws there underneath the bottom of the felt, which is what I had figured. So I'll uh, see you about either gluing this back on or if they want a new felt, I'll put a new felt on it for them. So, okay, let me go ahead and finish taking this apart and we will continue. Okay, got the bottom, oops, sorry about that. Got the bottom off and here's what I found. We do have a two-speed fan. The switch here is a three-way switch, three-click switch and it goes basically on high, it's connected directly to the fan motor. On uh, low, it goes through this resistor, which I'm assuming is bad, and we're about to check. So I got my meter here, and we will do continuity. You'll hear it when I touch that, okay? Let you know when these things touch, you're going to have a beep if it's low. Okay, so the resistor is good. Or, I'm checking through the fan, hold on. Okay, no, the resistor seems like it's good. Let's see where it's going. That side's going directly to the fan. And, ah, oh, we got a broken wire. That's why it's only running at one speed, the switch is bad. See, the wire is completely out of the switch. So, 
I don't know if I can fix that. I might have to put a new switch on it. So you need a switch. The bottom's clean and everything's clean. Definitely uh, would suggest uh, replacing, actually the head wires and oh, that's a little crispy. It's fine. I'll, I'll look at the motor when I take it apart and see. But um, to, if could replace these grommets, they're in bad shape. They should be replaced. I can always take the wire off, slide new grommets over it, and I can clean this wire up. Or we could put a new cloth wire. This is the same kind of wire I, uh, sort of the same kind of wire I install on these cloth covered cotton wires. This one is brittle, which means it's old, and eventually, as I'm moving it, I, you hear that? You can hear it. Listen. Hear that crackling? That's, that needs to be replaced. We need a new head wire. And somebody replaced the cord at one time, So, but this is not the right cord for this fan. So we can put a um, cord, cord on there. Um, and then, of course, you know, disassemble the motor, grease it, clean it, get all that old nastiness out of there and get it spinning because it's not spinning. Well, actually, the inside is not bad. It's just the, uh, yeah, it just needs to be clean. Uh, apparently, this was probably the high speed that let go because the way that's turning, I'm thinking, my first thought when it was turning so slow is that it was um, just really gummed up inside, but it looks like it's not too bad. So I'm thinking this must be the high speed itself. And let's see, one side goes there. The other side of this comes into the switch here. Yeah, that would be the high. This would be the low. It goes to the resistor, comes back to the resistor, and goes to the fan motor. This side goes directly to the fan motor. So this is high. So we've got the low speed, but we don't have the high speed. And that explains the off, off, on, off, off, on. It would normally be off, high, on, low, off, high, low, but it's going off, off, low, off, off, low, if that makes sense. That's what's happening inside this lever, lever to our switch. Um, and I mean, that came right out of there and it broke off. I'm, I might be able to fix the switch. I can try to open it up, take it apart, and see if I can solder that back on. But it might be better just to get a new switch. It's a rotary three-way switch. If I can fix it, I probably will because the switches back then are much nicer than the switches today. But um, be that as it may, you know, everything is, it is what it is. Um, the base itself definitely needs to be painted inside. And you see this, what they did is there is, this is the old felt here that's in here. And um, rather than replace it somewhere along the way, somebody stuck this piece of like leatherette leather here. They just glued it on there right over the screw holes, probably because of the base felt was really a mess and you see all that rust in there so what I definitely suggest doing is stripping this paint it send I can hit it with my wire brush take it down sand it whatever paint it inside paint the bottom all this would be painted all this rough uh, edge that's rusted I can clean it up and paint that I wouldn't worry about painting the fan unless you want the fan painted but the base, definitely, you want to protect it. It's rusting away. Put a new felt on it. Fix the switch. Dissect the motor. Clean it out. Clean the blade. Clean everything out. And then uh, put it back together, and it should be a good running fan for you. So that's the feedback to the customer as to what I should do. And um, fortunately, the speed control is speed resistor is good. And could be a coil, could be a resistor, I'm not sure on this particular one, but either way it's fine. Actually, it's most likely a resistor. What is it reading? Get rid of that. Yeah, 
47 ohms, so it's a resistor. Um, a coil would only be an ohm or two or three. So the resistor is good. All this is good. Got a little bit of rust on that plate there. See it in the back on the plate that, that it screws to. That's just a heat sink for the resistor. I'll probably go ahead and take these screws out, drop the resistor out, and spray that plate. Put it back in just to protect it so it doesn't rust through it and so it stays as a good heat sink. And then, like I said, the head wire is original. It should be replaced. That would mean pulling the stator out of the motor, but uh, on this motor, actually, it might not even need, need that uh, because in this model, this kind, the case comes apart here instead of around this way. It's got to seem this way. So I might be able to change the head, mo uh, head wire back here without actually removing the stator, which would be nice. So, of course, I got to take it out anyway because this particular model, the the grease fittings are inside the case. They're in up in here. It is well, you'll see when I open it up. But that's where the grease fitting is in the back here, is the gearbox. So that'll have to be cleaned. I have to open it anyway. I might as well replace that wire. And I recommend changing this wimpy line cord. It's already got some wear to it. It's not. I mean, it's not bad to have a uh, 50s style, which is probably what this is. This Actually, this could be, no, I don't think that's original. This looks like a radio, a tube radio or a vintage transistor radio cord. It doesn't appear to be a GE cord. It's just a brown cord. Um, I can put a, a nice covered black cord on here would look good with the uh, replacement black cord, cord up here and you see it's already breaking through the insulation there so it'd be a nice it'd be a nice contrast with new new rubber gaskets uh, grommets here and a black cloth cord all the way out the back and into the up to the wall and normally what I do is I put a grounded plug on the cord for the owner's sake here, what I do is I put one of these on it, three-prong grounded cord, and I ground it to the inside of the case, to, to here, to one of the screw holes, which grounds the fan and brings it up to modern standards of safety. Of course, you know, back when these fans were made, this fan was made, they didn't have um, grounded plugs. They had these, and they weren't even polarized. Um, if you'd rather have a small plug that's polarized, it can only go in the outlet one way, that's okay. But I really recommend a good heavy-duty uh, grounded plug cord like plug like this. The reason being is, um, well, one, it's, it goes in one way for sure. If the outlet is wired wrong, then uh, you still got a ground protection here. You, you know, this is much better. This is. Uh, a much more powerful um, plug, and uh, it, it'll do a whole whole lot better for security. Not only that, it gives me the third wire to ground the case, and that is much more important than a two-prong wire that doesn't ground, because if this case should ever get shorted from the wire wearing through and touching the case, you know, and, and the hot wire touches the case and you're standing in the kitchen or whatever, around the sink, and you touch this, you could get a nasty shock. Uh, like I said, back then, they just didn't have ground plugs. They didn't even have polarized plugs. So um, it would be worth doing. So that's what I would recommend, and that's what I'm going to um, recommend to the customer on this fan, and then we'll go ahead and restore it once we uh, get to go ahead. Okay, this is a better look at the plug that I would recommend. And also, this is the cable, which you can see is a nice hot and cloth cable. And it has three conductors inside, a hot, a neutral, and a ground, and safely ground it out. And um, this just came in today, made in USA. It's still made cable in USA. It's actually made up, this cable's actually made up in Massachusetts. 
and uh, nice quality cable, 18 gauge conductors and very good cable. But that's what I would recommend putting in your fan. So I just wanted to show you that so you could get an idea of uh, what, what the new cable would look like. And uh, it'd look a whole lot better than that line cord. So there you have it. I'm just so if you're watching this video, uh, I will update the comments, the, the uh, description below with the um, with part two and three, well, part two at least as we as we restore this fan. So if you found it interesting and you're looking forward to seeing it, please hit the bell and you'll get a notification of my new video, new videos coming out in this series as well as my other videos that I create. And um, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already and I appreciate your support. Thank you and have a blessed day.